And that is Splashdown, developed by Rainbow Studios. Yeah, the same company who made the first ATV Off-Road Fury games, then the MX vs. ATV franchise, and who could forget? The game adaptation of Disney's Pixar's Cars. So what is Splashdown? In case you weren't looking at the obvious gameplay footage, it's a jet ski racing game endorsed by sea a watercraft and boats brand manufactured by Bombardier, or BRP. I used to have a similar game like this called Wave Rally, which was released on the same month as this, but endorsed by Kawasaki. Guess what? It sucks! There's also the Wave Race series, but I've never got the chance to play that. But now I have Splashdown, what do I get? ATV Afro Fury, but with Sea Doos! You could play as one of the eight playable riders along with their dedicated Sea Doos, but half of them you must unlock in career mode. In the usual jet ski racing game, you navigate around the track passing certain sizes of buoys because water based tracks are pretty open ended and sometimes hard to design, in my opinion. The difference between Splashdown and other jet ski games I've mentioned are that the buoys are not all over the place. Mission 1 does not disqualify you, but stalls your watercraft for a couple seconds. Some of Splashdown's tracks are quite narrow, and even on different heights or platforms like in the Spain level, my personal favorite. The tracks themselves ranges from the US, Scotland, to even Satan's closet called Australia. Plus it gets trickier and technical when you progress through the 20 levels. The controls in this game are quite bouncy, literally. If you try to land with the front down, you'll submerge and bounce around. If you lean back when landing, you'll bounce too. But landing flat is a considerable choice. In the training mode, you're greeted with some helpful techniques like submerging, bunny hopping, hydroplaning, and do a flip from bunny hopping. Nice. The only technique you have to rely most is the hydroplaning which is equivalent to the straight line boost. I think the rest of it were underutilized, but those techniques came to play on later levels. There's collectibles in levels which unlocks wetsuits for particular riders, but don't expect these to be quite outlandish. Oh, and uh, remember what I said about this game is developed by Rainbow Studios? Well, in Rainbow Studios fashion like ATV Off Road Fury and Motocross Madness, if you go way far off the map and on free ride, you get launched back in, son! Splashdown goes up the ante by releasing the Kraken on your ass. The downside is that the camera can be an issue as it goes all over the place, disorienting the player. But at least you can actually change the camera angles with a simple triangle button. The trick system is okay, but the more advanced ones are quite unresponsive. The soundtrack is also okay, but most of the songs are quite forgettable. And the only ones I've remembered are SR-71s right now, KMF DM's Son of a Gun, and uh, <laughs> who could forget this. Worst of all is that the menus kinda suck. I know that's a nitpick, but this is one of the most dullest menu screens I've ever seen. Let's take Gran Turismo 3 for example. It's colorful, it's alive, and selecting things are quite satisfying. Another example is called the uh, Malice, a mediocre platformer in 2004. It has some atmosphere into it as you navigate through the main menu by a book. And one more example, Doom. You get to see the action while browsing through the menu as the demo rips and tears demons apart. You see what I mean? Maybe not. Now in case you're wondering, why didn't I bought the sequel which was League Superior and even Balls Crazy? Well, this game is actually cheaper and my curiosity demands it. Hell, it's even on my little PlayStation 2 wishlist because it's one of those games that my childhood wants to play but never got to. Not even the playable demo. So Splashdown and its sequel are worth getting. This game in particular is also available on Xbox. Now question is, 
Where did I heard about this game? That answer is next time.